So again, welcome everybody. And wow, kakaiba ang ating webinar for this afternoon. Creative writing. So um, wag na tayong uh, mag-atubili. May I now call on Dr. Alita Santos. She will be introducing our lecturer for this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to introduce the speaker for this afternoon. She's Dr. Celestine Trinidad, a graduate of BS Biology from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and went on to take up medicine in the University of Santo Tomas. She finished her residency training in anatomic and clinical pathology in the University of Santo Tomas Hospital. She's currently practicing as a pathologist in the same hospital and in a few other institutions around Metro Manila, as well as teaching in the faculty as an assistant professor of pathology. In her spare time, she writes fiction of various genres. Uh, some of her other stories have been published in other print and online venues, such as the Philippine Free Press, Philippines Graphic, Philippine Speculative Fiction, The Digest of Philippine Genre, uh, genre Stories, Alternative Alamat, and the Southeast Asian Fantasy Volume of Insignia. Her contemporary romance novella, Ghost of a Feeling, which is available on Amazon and in print, deals with depression and issues of mental health in the medical field. She also wrote the script for an episode of the web series, Hello Ever After, featuring characters from this novella set right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. She won first place for short story for children English division in the 2008 Palanca Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature for her story, The Storyteller and the Giant. Um, she also has various scientific papers published, orally presented, and poster presented, especially in the field of dermatopathology and breast pathology. Let's all welcome Dr. Celestine Marie Trinidad, our speaker for this afternoon. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you, Dr. Santos, for that uh, really kind introduction. Uh, can everyone hear me? <laughs> Just wanted to check. All right. Yes. Yes, Leslie. Thank you. So uh, let me start sharing my screen. All right. So can everyone now see my screen? So, um, yes, we can. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so good day to everyone. Good afternoon. It's a rainy afternoon, and I hope you're all staying safe in your in your homes. And uh, so, thank you, everyone, for uh, participating in this webinar. So, it's a different webinar this time. It's not about it's not exactly about medicine, but it's, it is still very uh, pertinent for us physicians. So it is about creative writing for physicians. So before we start anything else, um, we're, I'm going to put up a poll. So um, there is going to be a poll question just so I could get a feel of um, our audience today. So have you ever written a creative writing piece before? So just a simple yes or no um, poll question. So it's a few minutes for that before anything else. Okay, so yeah. okay, so also to the panelists, thank you. If you would if you'd like to answer in the chat <laughs> if you have if you have ever written a creative writing piece before. So <laughs> yes. Thank you. So, okay, maybe a few couple more seconds. So, uh, before stopping the poll, so, 
Oh, and I see the results of the poll. There. So, okay, so that's great. So uh, about 64% of the audience has written and uh, there's still a good number that have not written a creative writing piece before. So uh, I think you're, you're interested in writing, so that's why you're here. So then for those who have not written any creative writing piece yet, the first question will be for you. So let us define first, what is creative writing? So creative writing is a form of artistic expression. So it draws in the imagination to convey meaning through the use of imagery, narrative, and drama. So as doctors, we do a lot of writing. As uh, mentioned probably in my CV, um, I've also done a lot of scientific writing. So in medicine, we do a lot of technical writing. We, we write medical abstracts, we write uh, clinical uh, clinical abstracts, we write death protocols, uh, medical histories, so we uh, research articles, we've done all that. So to contrast what technical writing is to creative writing. So this is a piece of technical writing. So a 57-year-old male came into the emergency room with a chief complaint of difficulty of breathing. So that's, we just tell it what it is. But creative writing is writing the same thing in a different way. So here in this example that I wrote <laughs> very quickly for this, this particular lecture. So uh, we, we shift the focus of the story, not to, on the patient, but on the doctor who saw her in the, med, in the emergency room. So this is a piece of creative writing. When you um, tell the story in a different way, so you don't, don't just uh, tell the what happened so but you uh, provide a different perspective and then you use imagery you use narrative techniques and the like so there are different types of creative writing so there are different ways to categorize creative writing one is by style so first is prose which is written in a language in its ordinary form so without metrical structure so um this the example that i showed earlier of creative writing is a, an example of creative writing in prose uh, poetry is when you formulate a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience in language chosen and arranged to create a specific emotional response through meaning sound and rhythm so you don't necessarily have to have a metrical structure with poetry um, but you have to use the language in a way that evokes a specific emotional response. So let's just uh, look at a particular example. So this is creative writing with prose, the, the one that I showed earlier. And this is creative writing that is poetry. So I'm not very well versed in poetry. So I, uh, this is a poem by Dr. John Patrick Murray um, about also a, uh, a similar scene in the ICU. So as you can see here, the, the language is specifically chosen to evoke um, a particular emotional response. So the, the use of the words um, is metaphorical in nature most of the time so uh, for example birds of prey the use of birds of prey here um, gives a particular tension to the scene um, which is different from how you would state it if you use prose for this so other styles uh, would be graphic novel or comics which is stories told with pictures so this is a comic from the comic callus so i'll be i'll be uh, i'll be mentioning more about this comic later on in the lecture and um, there's also script, which is written text used in a performance, uh, for example, in a stage play, screenplay, or broadcast. So uh, next we have, um, we can categorize creative writing by content. So first is fiction, in which you describe imaginary events and people. So, um, there. So, uh, when fiction, there fiction has different genres. So, um, the different genres of fiction include one, speculative fiction. Speculative fiction is sort of the umbrella term for these following uh, genres. There's fantasy, science fiction, and horror. And these particular sub-genres also have their particular sub-sub-genres. So there's for fantasy, there's high fantasy or epic fantasy, there's uh, 
urban fantasy, there's dark fantasy, there's even paranormal romance. So that's you, you have that. And science fiction also has the different uh, subcategories, such and also horror. And there's romance, which is a genre. It also has its different subcategories. And there's crime, which includes murder mysteries and thriller novels. Now, historical fiction uh, involves uh, narratives that take place in the past. So this is usually an imaginative reconstruction of historical events and personages, while contemporary relates to modern uh, and relates to the present time. And I would also like to uh, spend a bit of time on this, uh, this genre, which is fan fiction. So it's fictional writing based on an existing work of fiction, usually written by fans, hence the name fan fiction. Um, the word pastiche is defined by some authors as a story written in an attempt to imitate the storytelling style of the published canon. So um, some of the published uh, pastiches or fan fiction that we have been uh, that we can see are, uh, for example, this novel, The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz, which is a novel based on the Sherlock Holmes novel, novel or this um, novel entitled Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James, which is based on Pride and Prejudice. Uh, a lot of there's also a lot of fiction posted online. So um, one site is fanfiction.net, and there's also archive of our own. So uh, where a lot of people also post fiction based on different series, so anime and manga, books and literature, and cartoons, comics, and graphic novels. So this is also a, uh, a genre of fiction. Um, the second type by content would be creative nonfiction, which is a which is, contains prose accounts of real people, places, objects, or events. So unlike fiction, which uh, deals with imaginary uh, imaginary accounts, this would be real accounts of real people and real events. There are also different types of creative nonfiction. So there's articles, autobiographies, memoirs, uh, biographies, essays, nature writing, sports writing, or travel writing. Um, so, so, and also you can also um, categorize creative writing by age. So there's writing that's meant for children. So this is less than 12 years old, young adult for 12 to 17 years old, uh, new adult for those 18 to 30 years old and adult for, for more than 30 years old and above. So, um, so before we move on to the next question or the next topic, I would just like to um, ask, so since now you know what are the different genres, different types of fiction, I'd like to ask a, a, bit of a question from the audience. So, so you guys said chat na lang siguro, just to make things easier for us. What type of uh, creative writing or what genre of creative writing have you written before in the past or would like to write then? So just feel free, free to um, answer in the chat. So which of those, of all those types and genres would you like to uh, write? Yes, back in, oh great, that's nice. <laughs> Hello, Therese. So, and Prose, okay. Sige. So, Hmm, sci-fi, poetry in there, horror, that's great. So, okay, so just, you can just keep on answering in the chat while I uh, proceed with the, with the lecture. So that's also great to see everyone. So, uh, fan fiction, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so now we go to this question. So is it really possible to be a doctor and a writer? So I would like to just uh, give this little anecdote. Um, before I went into uh, before I went to college, uh, I come from a science high school. So we're supposed to enroll in a science course after high school because that's the stipulations of our contract in our in our high school. So, um, but 
a couple of my classmates, instead of going into a, a science-related course, went into creative writing. And that made me think, huh, should I also do that? Um, because I really liked writing at the time. At the time I was already writing, I was writing original fiction, fan fiction, posting it on the net, and I really wanted to keep doing that. But I also really wanted to be a doctor. So I went and asked my father, who, who was also a doctor, He's a, he was a surgeon, and uh, he, I asked him, um, so should I give up on my dream of being a doctor because I also want to be a writer? Or should I give up being a writer if I wanted to be a doctor? And he just shrugged and said, so why don't you be both? And that kind of molded uh, my path in life later on because I I figured hmm, maybe I could do both. So here I am, both a writer and a doctor. And it's not really as uncommon as we think it is. So throughout history, there are uh, have been a lot of physician writers. So the answer to that question is yes, you can be a doctor and a writer. So uh, here are a couple of physician writers throughout history. So let's just go to the very way back to the past. So one of the writers of the Gospels themselves is um, is a physician. So St. Luke or Luke the Evangelist, actually my favorite Gospel writer. Um, the early church fathers ascribed to him authorship of both the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. And he is also a physician. Uh, St. Paul, in one of his epistles, referred to him as the physician, as in Greek, the one who heals. So he was definitely one of the ancient physician writers. Next, we have Anton Chekhov. He's a Russian and wrote plays and over 500 short stories, including The Lady uh, with a Dog and The Seagull. Uh, he qualified in 1884 as a physician, and he considered this as his principal profession, but he made little money from it and treated the poor free of charge. And Arthur Conan Doyle, actually the author of the Sherlock Holmes stories and novels, is also a doctor. Uh, he's a British author of uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories and novels. And his first published story was published in 1879 while he was still in medical school. And he actually published the Sherlock Holmes stories while he had just opened up his medical practice. So while he was waiting for people to notice his practice and uh, he wrote stories on the side in order to make money while waiting for his practice to pick up. Uh, next, we have Margaret Todd, uh, a Scottish um, author of Mona McLean, medical student in 1892, which she also wrote while she was still in medical school. And at the time, women writers uh, released their work under male pseudonyms, so, so she released her work under the name Graham Travers. William Carlos Williams is an American poet and also a physician. And his most famous poem includes The Red Wheelbarrow. I remember reading this in college, actually, and I had only recently found out that he is actually also a doctor. And he won a posthumous Pulitzer Prize for poetry in 1964. Michael Crichton, the, the author of, the, of Jurassic Park, is actually also a doctor. He received an MD from Harvard Medical School in 1969, but he did not practice medicine after because he already became a full-time writer after that. And uh, his science fiction novels include Jurassic Park, its sequels, and The Andromeda Strain. Uh, Robin Cook is an American uh, ophthalmologist and surgeon and who writes thriller novels such as Coma, um, Pandemic, and Vital Signs. There's also Khaled Hosseini. Uh, you may have um, read his work, The Kite Runner, which is a very heartbreaking book, really. Um, it's a very beautiful book. And um, he's an internist. And he practiced internal medicine for 10 years until the publication of his book and that the success of it allowed him to retire after that. Sana all. <laughs> yeah. And Oliver Sacks is a British neurologist whose books are mostly collections of case studies of people. So um, his book is The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales. 
And there's also Abraham Vergesi, uh, Ver Vergesi <laughs> who is an American, an internist who wrote My Own Country, A Doctor's Story. Uh, Paul Kalaniti is an American neurosurgeon whose book, When Breath Becomes Air, was published posthumously in 2016 after he died of lung cancer. So this is also another um, very poignant and uh, heartbreaking book. So you can uh, also recommend it to read this. Siddhartha Mukherjee is a Bengali American medical oncologist and his book, The Emperor of All Maladies, won 20, the 2011 Pulitzer Prize for General Nonfiction. So um, there are also many Filipino physician writers. So just wanted to run down all this. So we all know Dr. Jose Rizal. He's an ophthalmologist by profession and actually graduated from the University of Santo Tomas. He's a prolific poet, novelist, and essayist. And his books, Nolia Metangere, El Filibusterismo, we all read in high school. But it is also a, these are also very nice books as well. Uh, Arturo Rotor is uh, is also a, one of the more well-known short story writers in the Philippines. He graduated simultaneously from the Conservatory of Music and the College of Medicine. And his specialty is allergology and immunology. He's actually the pioneer allergist in the Philippines. His stor short story collections include The Wound and the Scar, The Men Who Play God. For children's books, we have Dr. Luis Gatmaitan, who is a pediatrician. And his children's books include books that deal with healthcare topics and introducing them to children for their education. So his book, San Dosenang Sapatos, won the uh, palang, 2001 Palanca for children's short stories. There is also for speculative fiction, there is Dr. E.K. Gonzalez, who's in family medicine, and her uh, and their book, uh, C. Santa Anita, and uh, activated our science fiction books. For romance, um, I'm part of a book, uh, I'm part of a group of romance authors, a romance class. So we also are. Uh, uh, we also have doctors in our group. So, uh, doctors Angeli Idomatol, who's currently training in nuclear medicine right now and uh, authored Heartstruck, and uh, Dr. Suzette de Borja, who is a dermatologist by training and uh, uh, who is one of the authors of the anthology Alta and the Princess Finds Her Match. And shameless plug, we also, we also made an anthology along with Dr. Ike Gonzalez, The Doctor is in Love. For comics, there is Dr. Carlo Jose San Juan, uh, whose specialty is uh, in nuclear medicine. In nuclear, in, in nuclear medicine, uh, who's, um, who's um, whose comics Kalos is uh, also deals with uh, life in medicine. Uh, for creative nonfiction, we have Dr. Ali Sun Pua, and uh, who writes travel essays. So um, the, her, uh, her books include Kissing Through a Handkerchief, Autumn in Madrid. And there's also Dr. Ronnie Iba de Colon, who writes essays uh, on uh, the life of a doctor also as well. He's a neurosurgeon, and uh, his book is entitled Some Days You Can't Save Them All. There are actually many writers, and I was not able to put them all in a single slide, but these are all the writers, in Philipp physician writers in the Philippines. So um, they all write either poetry, uh, poetry, speculative fiction, um, also creative nonfiction. One of the books you should all check out would be From the Eyes of a Healer, which is an anthology of medical anecdotes. And we have many writers also, not just in print, but also in, on, on, in online venues. So we have um, writers on Wattpad and they have a really large um, reader base as well. So, um, and also this for all the for the people in the audience, actually Wattpad is a very is a very good place to publish your work because a lot of Filipinos are reading. Actually, um, you may be surprised, but Filipinos are readers. But they they read in uh, they read in the platforms that are not usually recognized by other writers. Um, and but. We usually really should encourage uh, more writers to put out their work online. And there. 
So, and also a shout out to if, if some of you are in the audience, so some of my um, co-fellows in the uh, second CNF Writers Workshop for doctors. So uh, they're also very good writers. So and that's me. <laughs> so another you know, shameless blog. So if you want to check out my works, there, uh, there, that's my website over there. So why should we doctors go into creative writing? So I mean, we're already doing a lot of things. We're already studying a lot. We're also going. We're, we're going on duty. We have a lot of work. So why should we add one more thing to do? Because actually writer, writing, creative writing in particular, can make us better doctors. When the age-old adage for writing is to write what you know. And doctors, we know the life of a doctor best. We know very well our own struggles, our victories. And our own emotions, how we deal with grief, how we deal with our patients, we, we, know, we know this. Other writers can research on it, but uh, we have first-hand knowledge of our experiences as a doctor. And um, we can best also, we can best write that. Um, I honestly have this um, difficulty watching medical series because sometimes even when they have uh, medical consultants sometimes there are still some details that they don't get exactly right uh, and it that's why i really like write reading writing by doctors too because i can actually relate to it because oh, this is similar to my experience and and, uh, and that's really nice to see also, the accuracy of medical information can be assured when a doctor is uh, is writing uh, is writing a work. Uh, these are some funny pictures of uh, these are some funny pictures of um, scenes in telenovelas where they get things really hilariously wrong. So uh, and so when we doctors write it, we we can we know what what's correct. At least, or at least we know how to research so that it will be uh, really right. Uh, we can also provide medical consultancy. So, uh, but then it would still be uh, we can still write it best. Also, patients. Uh, I also advocate for patients writing their own experience because um, that's that's also something that we need to see. But as doctors, we also have our own uh, perspective on the suffering of our patients, uh, particularly when this pandemic started. And then we, we see things being said on TV, but we know very well how our patients are struggling. So we can write also about that because uh, what we see moves us to moves us to write about these things because these things have to be told. Uh, so uh, our patient stories have to be told also. So um, so this would be, so this is also one reason why we can, why we have to write. We have to tell the stories of our patients, of ourselves and our patients. Number two reason, for creative writing as a physician is that writing can help us process our own emotions and build self-awareness. So this is one, uh, this is one stu study that I saw on PubMed. So the craft of writing, a physician writer's workshop for resident physicians, uh, published in 2006 in the Journal of General Internal Medicine by uh, Reisman, MD, uh, Reisman et al. So in this study, 15 residents took part in a two and a half day writing workshop with Dr. Abraham Vrigese. So um, here, um, this this study looked at the effect of this workshop on the residents who took part in the workshop. Uh, so there were different themes. There, there were different themes from the residents' writing that were seen. One is of dysphoria. So, um, so the residents wrote about their insecurity in training, their discomfort with breaking bad news to patients, conflicting emotions, and burnout. 
uh, some also wrote of the importance, um, importance of the physician when it comes to healthcare, the moral dilemmas of medical intervention, the futility of medical care, awareness of how little physicians know their patients, but also some themes um, emerged uh, about the healing power of compassion. There's the capacity to renew, to renew one's interest in and passion for medicine. The thing with medical education, when it is less about the humanities and about uh, and less about the humanities and more just about science, about the disease, um, it may lack emotional engagement with the mission of medicine. So. Doctors can tend to be more burned out because they they don't really know to they don't really know um, what to do with it uh, with what they learned because they lack this emotional quest this emotional engagement with what, what they're learning. So creative writing can help us process these feelings and uh, build awareness of ourselves of um, what we're struggling about of uh, what. Uh, what we can do also to make things better. Next reason is that writing can help us doctors communicate better. So this uh, article by Dr. J. Baruch uh, in uh, the Journal of Medical Humanities in 2013 uh, also, um, um, also deal dealt with this particular um, issue. So narrative medicine is one emerging field right now. And in this article, Dr. Baruch said that um, patient stories often feel like first drafts. So for the writers in the audience, uh, first drafts are usually very messy, as you know. Uh, they're, they're, either you have told too much in your first draft or you told too little. So, um, so so patient stories are like that. When they come to you to the emergency room feeling distressed, their stories are not very coherent. Uh, and, and also they're not doctors, so they don't know what to tell you and they don't know what will be significant to you. So, um, so when you approach story, patient stories like a first draft, um, you're a story expert. So patient healthcare providers should be story experts. You should know what's important. You should be able to sort out the coherence of the story uh, from beginning to end. So you should be able to sort these things out. And um, that. Uh, and when you're a creative writer, you also have practice doing that. So um, you can approach patient interactions like a story. And also, that can help us communicate with each other better. So, um, because when we form a more coherent, more logical story, we can also communicate that better to our colleagues. So, in this article, he said that the smallest details reveal and betray character. So, not only what is said and unsaid, but the nuanced space that surrounds words, the vitality and tone of the voice. So, it helps you look deeper also into situations. Um, you don't take th things at face value because when you've um, written enough things, when you've read enough things, you know that things aren't always what they seem. So, um, being exposed to creative writing and the humanities can help with that. Corollary to that would be that writing can help us empathize with our patients more. So uh, when you approach thing, when you approach things like a story, uh, your patients also become like characters, characters that you care for. So you regain the focus on the person who has the disease, and not just the disease on the person. So you start thinking when you look at. Uh, when you look at patients also as characters, you also think what fuels their motivations and desires? What are their circumstances? How does that affect their health? Um, why did they not go to the ER at this time? Why did they wait for two years before checking before having a checkup? So when you start understanding uh, when you start understanding patients as persons, uh, that really helps you become a better physician. Also, writing can help us empathize with each other. 
So uh, we also, so in the story, the, char- the only character is not just the patient. Other people around you are also characters. So they have their own motivations, their own um, circumstances. And um, so you start also looking at your colleagues as people. And sharing writing also can affect peer and group relations. So in that study that I mentioned earlier, the first one by Reisman et al., so the residents who share their writing with each other, this led to more group cohesiveness because there's exposure to different perspectives on the same situation. So one of the residents there said that they had similar experiences, but they it turns out that they conceptualized and described these experiences differently, which was really uh, very interesting and eye-opening as well. And a shared vulnerability is created. So because, for example, when I uh, when I share my stories as a consultant right now, when my residents or medical students can read my stories, they can also think that, huh, so we also had the same experiences. And, um, and there's an openness of discussion that helps dissolve hierarchy. And also, you realize that you're not really alone. In your in your journey through medicine, your experiences are not you're you're not the only one who experienced that. So it's also very reassuring as well. So in the end, it helps doctors be nicer to each other, which we really need right now. Uh, writing can also help us expose problems in our practice and find ways to solve them. So uh, one of the common techniques in writing so the is the use of the three act structure so act one is you introduce the you set up the plot there's rising action and stakes get high in act two act three you have the peak of the crisis which is resolved until the end so um knowing this three act structure uh, creative writers know that a conflict is part of the story so when you know that conflict is part of the story, you don't uh, you don't bury it, you don't avoid it. You actually embrace conflict. Not to say that uh, creative writers actually actively look for conflict in their lives, but conflict is a part of life. So, um, but when you're a creative writer, you also know that it's part of the story, so you embrace it, you probe it, and you explore challenges, and you find ways to solve these problems. Uh, sometimes when I encounter really big problems in life, I uh, ko, oh, act three pa lang to, kaya, kaya pa to, I can get to my happy ending. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, an attitude that you can have as a creative writer. So, um, and then also, you can... Uh, Creative writing can also help us stretch our imagination to arrive at solutions. It allows us to ask, what if? So um, Dr. Minerva Kalimag actually um, told me about this, this uh, journal, the Hypothetica Historia Peri- Periodical, which is found very interesting. Because it's a, it's a journal on alternative history in which authors um, ask what if questions and use it to approach modern day problems. So for example, what if this uh, person in history uh, went back, uh, went to our time, how would he solve our problems today? And that allows you to uh, think of out of the box solutions to problems today. And that's really very interesting. And when you write about things, there's also the possibility of affecting larger institutional and national and even world global changes through the sharing of stories. So um, stories can be a way not just to expose what is happening, but also to tell people how things can be better. In, for example, when in romance, I mean, for example, when we, since I'm also a romance writer, we we talk about how how relationships can be better, how men can be less misogynistic. So, and that affects change. People reading that can can actually think, ah, uh, so maybe things can be better. Maybe if we do this, we can make things better. So um, the article that I shared earlier said that also part of the ripple was having had uh, grand rounds read it and distributing our writing. So it infused the culture of this place. So their work actually helped um, institutionally be able to change things 
make things better. And lastly, writing is fun. So let's not be too deep into it to why we write. We write because it's fun. <laughs> so even if you're you're just writing very short fiction, then <laughs> again, this GIF is just the writing the. So writing is fun. And Barry Pratchett did say that writing is the most fun you can have by yourself. So always remember that to also enjoy writing. So uh, the bottom line is if you want to write, then write. So we go to the last question. How, how creative writing? So I know as doctors, we're, we all find it difficult to find time to write. Even medical students, the medical students in the audience, I know it's really hard to find time because you have a lot of exams, you have a lot of uh, projects to do for uh, the doctors in the audience. We have patients to attend to. And we set out this time to write and then suddenly we get a call. And even as pathologists, we go, I have a frozen section. <laughs> so uh, then, so we, we, it's, it really just breaks your habit sometimes of writing. So how do we get started with this? First off, read. Read, read, read. So this is very basic for writers. To be a writer, you also have to be a reader. So read. And I mean read widely. Read other genres. Don't just, um, don't limit yourself to one genre that you think is proper or, uh, or legit. Read all sorts of genres. Oh, read fantasy, read science fiction, read romance, read, read everything. Read what you want to read. Read fan fiction. That is also that uh, that can also help you be a writer. Um, read in other platforms. So I mentioned earlier that um, now nowadays it's not just print books that we have. We now also have ebooks. We have uh, stories published online on, on online magazines in Wattpad. We also have audiobooks right now, which you can listen to while, for example, you're stuck in traffic or you're stuck in line or you're on duty. You can. Read, um, listen to audiobooks and podcasts and more importantly read for fun so um sometimes some writers tend to read because they want to look at the techniques that are written by the writer they want to critique this particular work and that's fine that's also fine but don't forget to read for fun that uh, reading is an experience in itself which should be enjoyed so uh so yeah just don't just read academically read for fun and lastly, read Filipino authors. So we exist. There are a lot of readers. Uh, we are, there are a lot of Filipino authors, not just in English, in Filipino, in all our languages. So read Filipino authors, recommend them to your peers. Now I do is to research. So uh, we, that saying goes that uh, you write what you know, but there are also, of course, things that you do not know which you can still write about. So research on the things you do not know. So research on grammar and writing style, other, and also research on the medical special, specialties aside from your own. So I'm a pathologist, so I'm not very well versed in other medical specialties. So I uh, also research on other specialties when writing my own stories and also specialties outside of medicine. So, uh, uh, what I do is to I read also uh, when I, I write fantasy, so I I also read on Philippine mythology, on other mythologies, on folklore because I want to write them. So research also is very essential to writing. Next is find your own routine. There are various styles to writing as a uh, physician, so pick what best suits you. Um, some writers would set aside time to write each day, even just say five minutes a day, so that works for them. Uh, or you can opt to not write every day, but just set a day or a day or days for marathon writing. For example, take a leave, <laughs> take a leave to write, you know, to do that. Uh, or you write in your spare time. So you write when things are quiet less toxic in the ward or you use other days to outline. So uh, one tip that I can give is that uh, always be ready to jot down your ideas. Sometimes you're, uh, you're sitting in class or, you're, or for the faculty here, you're teaching in class. You suddenly have an idea. Um, 
always remember to jot down your ideas because you never know when you'll be able to write them. So, and you might forget your ideas. So you can use your phone or jot down your ideas. I used to have a lot of receipts in my wallet because I had needed paper to write on. So that's also, also one, one way to jot down your ideas. And manage your time wisely. Self-care is important. Don't force yourself to write when uh, you can't. Sometimes there are just days when you really can't write. Even when you have time to write, you just are not in the right mind space to write, the right head space to write. So don't force yourself to if it's not if the words aren't coming. And don't be so hard on yourself as well. Um, especially right now, for example. We're in a pandemic right now. So if you can't write, also don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, take care of yourself first before writing. Also, remember that we as doctors, our patients are still our priority. So um, sometimes I hear it said um, when, when, there, when, for example, some of my students are busy with, with work and um, uh, some of us tend to complain, oh no, ang dami kong ginagawa, wala, hindi na ako makapagsulat tulay sa gabal, sa gabal yung medicine. But uh, remember that we're here for our patients. We're studying for our patients. We're training for our patients. And um, it's natural to feel that way. It's, it's natural to uh, feel bad that you miss out on a lot of things. You miss out on vacations. You miss out on writing. But uh, also be mindful of that, that the patients, hindi sila sagabal. We're here to take care of them. So just make the most out of your experiences as a doctor. When these challenges come, as I said, we're, as writers, we know conflict. We embrace conflict. So we, uh, we take these challenges as it is. And because all these experiences, even when we're outside of writing, it still also molds us as people and also makes us better writers. I mean, maybe toxic ka ngayon, ganyan, but, um, but, you can use that experience later on. You can write about it. So, um, so yeah, just uh, make sure your patients are still your priority. And uh, also, another thing is to look deeper in, uh, into your experiences as a doctor. So as I said earlier, just don't think of medicine as parang inya, sa, sa, gabal, sa writing. Use it. Look deeper into your experiences as a doctor. So look for the story behind everything. So look for the story behind your patients and your colleagues. What are their fears and motivations? What are their circumstances? What if things were different for them? And um, self-introspection is also uh, one thing you can do. Uh, look deeper into yourself. How do you feel about your experiences as a doctor? What can I do to make things better? And uh, another uh, tip is to reach out to others. Uh, reach out to other writers. Uh, so join workshops, classes, etc., or uh, join a writing group. So I joined the writing group. And uh, also look for editors of your work, people who work in book production and adjacent media, and for example, films or uh, web series that. And also readers. Don't forget to connect to your readers because um, you're not just writing for yourself. You're also writing for your readers. Get to know your audience and connect with them because when you connect to your readers and your audience, you can also know better what to write for them. And you can ask people for writing prompts. So I do that when I'm blocked. I ask people for writing prompts. I'll give you a writing prompt later at the end of this. And also share your work. Look for open calls for submissions. Um, when I was starting out writing, I used to look for um, calls for submissions on uh, panitikan.ph. Panitikan and also online, there's a lot of um, calls for submissions online. Uh, and publish your works online. You can also, as I said, you can publish on Wattpad, you publish your fanfiction on archive of our own, fanfiction.net. And more the thing is don't self-reject. Um, don't reject your works before uh, before they're already put out. So there. So these are the different writing tips that you can use to start, get started on writing.
So lastly, let's have a take-home writing exercise. So hindi naman to required for the participants. Just a little take-home writing exercise. The prompt is night duty. So write a creative piece based on this prompt. So it can be any any creative writing piece, any length, any type, fiction, non-fiction, any genre. I mean, pwedeng niya, yeah, night duty in an ER that uh, treats manananggats. <laughs> something, something like that. Or there may be different perspectives, patients, uh, relatives, doctors, other medical workers. Don't also forget our other medical doctors. They're essential in healthcare. And uh, different issues, such as problems with their healthcare system, COVID-19, so you can write about anything. So, and I'd love to read your work. So if ever you'd write something with this prompt, feel free to email me at, at my institutional email, cgtrinidad.usd.edu.ph. I will try my best to read them as quickly as I can, since, but I would love to read your work. And uh, so I end with this quote by C.S. Lewis, you can make anything by writing. So uh, thank you. And this is my email if you have any questions, but I think we also have Q&A after. And this is my, these are my Twitter. Uh, um, Lucky Chan is my writer persona, while well, Celestrine MD is my pathologist persona. So feel free to follow me on Twitter. So thank you everyone for your attention and I would uh, love to answer your questions. Okay, as of now, we have six questions in the Q&A uh, chat and one other question in the general chat room. The first question came in a little early at 5.39. Um, did creative writing help you in your medical practice? If yes, in what way? Uh, so yes, it, it, uh, it helped me personally also in my medical practice. Uh, with, by the reasons that I mentioned before, it it helped me be able to uh, look at my experiences as a story. So it uh, it it helped me be able to form more cohesive, more cohesive narratives whenever I, for example, refer to patients or uh, whenever I talk to patients. It also was really helped me a lot to be able to communicate with them uh, better. And um, also, it helped me when doing research for some of my stories. It actually also really uh, helped me. Sometimes it's more interesting to read research when you're writing it for a story. So uh, there's this uh, journal article that I was reading for a uh, reading for research for a story, and then later on it came up in my practice. No, so I already know this. So, yeah. so that's also really how creative writing helped me. Next question, audiences are now shifting from written literature to more animated forms of um, media, such as movies. Do you think this is evident among the current generation? Is creative writing a dying art? Uh, so let me answer that question. I think that um, movies is still a form of creative writing. Remember that um, movies, uh, animated features are still still have scripts. So these are still written literature. So um, in this way, I think that creative writing is not dying as an art, but instead in evolving. So um, we also have to shift away from the thinking that creative writing is just one thing. So we have to recognize that there are many evolving uh, forms of written literature that are coming up right now. So not just movies, say, uh, there's also now uh, audio, audio books, there's also, um, th there's also podcasts, there's also a form of written literature actually. So uh, yeah, so it's not a dying art for me, it is instead in evolving, it's like a living organism. <laughs> Well, here's the third question. Can we incorporate creative writing in medical education? Is there a way by which we can allow medical students to explore creative writing while still accomplishing academic objectives? Um, so I was looking into, into that. Um, and so some, some programs actually 
abroad in the US in particular actually have subjects on medical fiction, medical humanities. So in these subjects, they have assigned readings uh, in, in class, I think. So, so if there are some members in the audience that are from the US, I think you can feel free to, to uh, share your experiences on that. But yeah, there uh, we can incorporate that into medical education, probably uh, there can be subjects on medical humanities and creative writing is included. So uh, that would be able to, we'll be able to accomplish academic objectives even um, and still incorporate creative writing into it. Can you get my share? Yes. Actually, I've been uh, for the last 10 years, I've been promoting qualitative research in medicine, and they're able to use, we are able to use the narrative paradigm as our framework in many of our, uh, many of our researches, and some of them are already published. We can incorporate humanities into medicine. Yes, that's, uh, I agree, Dr. Akalima. Okay, another question. How did having your first book published change or affect your writing process or your writing style? Um, well, uh, having it published, actually, uh, I mean, during the course of a of writing work, so you, as I said, your first draft is always messy, so you tend to edit and edit. And even when it's published, you tend to to see mistakes that you want to take back <laughs> publishing it. <laughs> and when having it published, um, actually affected the way that that I write because you get reader feedback after reader uh, you get reader feedback after it's being published so certain readers can point out uh, problematic things in your writing or tell you can also and during uh, reviews they can also tell you how it can make your work better so um, looking at the feedback also uh, help me connect with my audiences and also help me write other books after uh, uh, help me better write my next books after that. Does that answer the question? Sorry. Are blogs and journaling creative writing? Uh, um, well, that depends really on how they're written. So, um, actually, I, I would think that journaling can also is still creative writing, also blogging, but depending also on how you write uh, your your blogs. For example, if you're writing it in a technical manner, just telling what it, uh, just stating facts, just stating, uh, just stating facts, it may not be creative writing. But if you write it the way you you would write it creatively, like, write, like say you're writing a memoir or writing an autobiography, it is creative writing. How do we respond to writers' blog? You experienced it yourself. Thank you in advance. Oh, yeah. So writers' block is a experience I'm very much familiar with. I, I get it like every two weeks or so. <laughs> no. um, so uh, the way uh, I resolve writer's block is I don't force myself to write when I know that I am blocked. So it, is, it can be frustrating sometimes, especially when you have a writing deadline that you want to meet. For example, may submission call that you want to submit to, and, but you can't really write. So what I do, what I have learned to do through the years is not to force myself to, to write when I'm doing that. What I do is to read more. So I, I read more in the genre that I want to write in. So example, if I'm experiencing writer's block while writing fantasy, then I read a fantasy book there. So um, 
and so I read I, I read more. Also, I just move on to the next story. <laughs> uh, the problem with me is marami kasi nakapila na, na ideas sometimes. So if one story isn't working, then move on to the next. That can also be. So uh, but the important thing is to be kind to yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself that you're experiencing writer's block. And that's part of it then kasi. Uh, I think that when you're experiencing writer's block, you're also a bit frustrated with yourself. So that you're more blocked to lay because you're hard on yourself. So yeah, be kind to yourself is also one way to resolve it. I would like to write something about a specific... Uh, I lost the... Patience. I lost the uh, question. Hi. I think it's... I can I'll just read it. Uh, patient encounter. How can I make sure that I do not trespass the patient's right to confidentiality or the patient's right to privacy? Well, thank you. That is a very um, pertinent and interesting question. So yeah, that's a very good question, actually. I've been thinking about it because sometimes when you write uh, creative nonfiction, that's, that's the thing. You may tend... You may be... Uh, stepping on your patient's privacy. I also asked this question before uh, in a workshop with, and our panelist then was Dr. Ronnie Baticolon. And one uh, suggestion he mentioned was to change details a little bit the way we do when we also post cases online. Uh, in pathology, some, the pathology Twitter community is very active. So we also uh, post pictures of our cases, but to protect patient privacy, you don't put the exact details of the case. You just put what is important. For example, patient in their 40s, female in there. Um, and so so to help with, uh, pay, with data privacy. Also, if you're going to write about something that is very specific for a patient, as in, even if you change the details, if the, the story will still be recognizable, uh, involve your patient in in the decision to write it. Maybe ask your patient yourself, if, uh, is it okay if I write about this? Is it uh, also, and you know, ask for your permission. So that will also uh, help. Are there creative writing workshops you can recommend, Doc? Uh, where can we find this kind of workshops? Uh, so that depends on what you want to write. So um, if you if you want to write say fantasy maybe uh, there are certain the the well known workshops of Roderick Clarion West workshops um, and the like or if you want to write creative nonfiction you know, uh, De La Salle has a creative nonfiction workshop for writers so which we uh, which the second one was held this year I think next year they're also going to have it again so you can apply for that if you want to write creative nonfiction. Um, so the way to find these workshops is uh, actually online. It's better to look for them online or uh, to ask uh, your institution. Actually, um, USD also has a writer's workshop, by, by the way. So um, if you're in if you're if your institution, if you're in a college, you can start asking uh, them for workshops. When I was in college before, um, you know, I also looked out then sa institutional boards. Uh, they also post uh, links to workshops. Dr. Patrick Moral says, "Great talk, Leslie. Do you feel stilted by your being a physician in a Catholic institution in terms of the topics you can cover?" How would you overcome that? I will, yeah, that, that is a, uh, thank you, Dr. Moral. Thank you for the kind words and also for that uh, very good question. So um, I, I'm actually, um, um, I'm a very devout Catholic kasi. So, um, so in terms of the values of the Catholic faith, I, I do want to embody it in my life as well as in my writing so but there are um some things that uh some things that i know that the a catholic institution may frown upon and uh being when 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 you write about it but uh i 
in general because i tend to just to to write things that are uh are, are for example safe for children like that right is then so it, it doesn't really stifle me in terms of writing there are some issues though that i feel uh would be controversial in terms of um a in terms of a catholic institution in terms of these topics i mean uh Topics of LGBTQ is still controversial in a Catholic institution, um, so as well as a reproductive health that would also be uh, that would also be um, still controversial. So I'm still trying to balance that. You know, I'm still trying to ba- to to balance that. But in the end, we go to as Catholics, we go to our values and principles. So. Um, that, that's how I overcome it. In, in the end, I go back to our fundamental principles, I guess, as as Catholics, and um, and try to find that balance in my writing. I <laughs> I hope I answered that your question, Doctor Moral. Thank you, but this is a very interesting question. Uh, the next question I think has been answered, how to deal with privacy concerns if we choose to write about the medical life. I think you have answered it already. So let's go to the next question. Um, pathology has always been a descriptive field, especially by which pathologists submit their reports. In your experience, did being a pathologist in particular help your endeavors in write, creative writing? Uh, so yes, <laughs> the, the short answer to that is yes. Uh, I tend my my being a pathologist and a doctor tends to bleed into my writing a lot. So I also write crime fiction. So being a pathologist in particular really helps with writing crime crime fiction because we you know because we do autopsies forensic pathology, uh, and also um, since. There's also practice in pathology. There's this practice of, as you said, it is a very descriptive field. So it's visual. So um, by forcing me to be visual, even in my field, in my writing, I also have to be visual to describe things, uh, to to describe things succinctly, to uh, so that people. Uh, the one of the tips given to us when writing pathology reports is that when people read your reports alone, uh, when people just read it, they can already imagine the specimen just by your description alone. So that is also the way with this with writing. If when people just reading your words, you they can imagine what's going on, how your characters look like. So it goes hand in hand for me, um, being a pathologist and also a creative writer. Creative writer. Uh, can we incorporate creative writing in medical education? Is there a way by which we can allow medical students to explore creative writing while still accomplishing academic objectives? Uh, yes, that was also, uh, I think Dr. Uh, Palimag also uh, answered that um, they have been uh, incorporating that into into their um, in, into their own research in qualitative research. So that is also one way that we can uh, incorporate it in education. Hello, Doc. Was there ever an instance that your knowledge as a medical doctor or health professional actually dampened the imagination and prevented an idea from growing? How does one balance realism and whimsy in writing, especially given that obsession with facts and accuracy sometimes does not mix well with creative liberty? Um, because to me, actually, um, I don't know, medical, med, my medical, my knowledge as a medical doctor doesn't actually dampen my imagination. Um, actually, Sometimes it it even leads to more questions. <laughs> it leads, leads to more what if questions. I, I I can be sitting in class and have an idea for a story, and uh, because of the of the medical knowledge, um, and um, but I guess what what can dampen that imagination is, uh, for example, I can't write science fiction that 
is like soft science fiction. I, I, I'm, I'm not really very, uh, I'm very good at that because uh, yeah, I guess uh, coming from a STEM related field, from a medical field, I always tend to think um, this has to be possible. <laughs> I mean, this has to be scientifically possible before I can write it. So I guess that's one, one instance where knowledge as a medical doctor can dampen that a particular idea from growing. But I look at it more of as a challenge because when you encounter that particular challenge na, okay, sige, hindi to scientifically possible, but how can it be scientifically possible? So yeah, it makes it even, it actually makes the idea grow even more. Um, it just gives me a harder time because it, uh, I have to research on it and then it leads to a rabbit hole of reading research papers. And uh, But then it actually makes the idea more nuanced in the end, more uh, sometimes better. So yeah. Uh, so you balance realism and whimsy in writing. Um, I want to get some facts right, but also give room for ideas for creative liberty. Like, uh, for example, when I'm writing about a particular experience in fiction, kaya naman I write fiction din eh, kasi um, I don't have to write the things as they are um, exactly. So I can put in other details, creative details there. So you mix that. But also make sure that it is still, say, plausible in real life um, when, I, when I write, say, um, realistic fiction. Um, when you're writing about something that you can't change the facts, uh, what you can do to make your work still creative is to change the way you write it. Change imagery, change um, the language that you use, like, uh, write it in poetry, right? change the rhythm of your words. So that's how you can still introduce creativity, even when you're not changing any facts or accuracy is still um, important. May I ask, Doctor, is what pod generally a safe space for writers, especially for original work posting? Um, from uh, so when you upload work on when you upload work on Wattpad, there's actually there's this drop down. <laughs> there's, there's a menu because there's this drop down menu where you will say that your right the copyright to your work is yours. So copyright of your work remain yours. There, I think, uh, and the Wattpad writers in the audience, I think, can better um, say this because I'm, I only dabble in Wattpad writing. So um, there have been some instances where their work, uh, where the work gets copied by other people, and that's one of the, the, I know the. Uh, risks of posting work online, but that's also a risk that you can get in whatever form you publish your work. So um, I would think that it is safe for original fiction um, because of that stipulation that the copyright remains yours. But um, but as with all writing, there is also still some some risk of plagiarism later on. But in general, and a lot of people are, are reading also Wattpad. So some people, some of your readers can recognize that, hey, that was stolen from someone else. So that also helps protect your work. From Emmanuel Joshua Garcia, how did the COVID pandemic affect your creative writing process? Thank you in advance. Uh, so the so the COVID nineteen pandemic um, was advantageous and disadvantageous for me, for me for writing at the same time. So um, because there's uh, there's less time that I spend traveling to places I work in because um, for example online classes now uh, for the faculty. Um, so there's a bit more time for me to write. So but. It's limited in the way that uh, I'm limited in the places where I can write. I used to like writing in coffee shops because there's less distraction. I mean, I'm I'm not uh, when I'm at home and I write, I tend to be distracted by a lot of things. So, but now I can't do that because of the pandemic. And also, the overall stress of the pandemic sometimes tends to dampen uh, my creative energy. So. Um, but there are also times that I get inspired to write because of what I see. And uh, what I see, for example, something, the 
I mean, something I see um, enrages me, so I write about it. So it's a mix of both disadvantages and disadvantages. And thank you for that question, Shu. The last question, describe your typical writing routine. Settings, instruments, ambience, etc. So there, uh, pre-pandemic, um, pre-pandemic, I, I used to write in coffee shop. So my I write directly in my laptop rather than, uh, so the, I said I usually write directly in my laptop. Um, but what I do first is to outline my stories and my outlines are handwritten. So I outline them, but I rarely follow that outline. <laughs> so uh, eventually the story takes on a form of its own. So, uh, and I, and I write on my on my laptop. Now in the pandemic, what I do is I write at home. So the usual ambience of writing is, um, well, I just write on my laptop here in my work desk. And uh, I have uh, often have a cup of tea <laughs> read, uh, nearby. I, for some reason, tea is, for, is my drink of choice when writing and not coffee. I don't know why. So, and that is my typical writing routine when I have time to write. Uh, when I was a resident, um, I used to write, <laughs> sorry, sa mga consultants ko in the audience, I used to write when I was on duty. So, when pag may quiet na moment uh, when I'm on duty, I go and <laughs> go and write some things while I'm alone on duty. So, yeah. uh, uh, there's a pahabol question <laughs> from Anjali Dumatol. Hi, Doc Leslie. Congratulations on this great talk. As doctors, we are involved in scientific writings and research it too. Uh, do you have tips for switching between technical and creative writing styles as being a physician writer would sometimes entail? Uh, okay, so one tip that I can think of, um, I don't know if it would work for you, but because uh, when I'm writing something and I'm reading something at the same time, I tend what I'm reading tends to get imbibed then so what I'm writing. So that's why when I'm writing something, I read something that uh, in the same type that I'm writing about. So when I'm writing scientific writing, I don't read. I don't read fiction <laughs> I tend I write I read research papers so so that helps me get into the writing group <laughs> the scientific paper writing group so that's one tip that I can think of um, another would be you really have to separate the type of language that you use for creative writing and for uh, and for uh, scientific writing because I tend to see some scientific writing na parang creative writing or vice versa na masyadong technical. So, uh, you have to uh, refine your style separately. So, refine your scientific writing style and the uh, creative writing style separately. So, if you have to take, uh, take workshops or classes in both. So, take uh, more, meron naman mga online eh, na, and uh, technical writing or scientific writing, so uh, to improve that there's also separately write your um, creative writing. Um, yun lang, uh, it, medyo mahirap din yung code switching, so yung code switching, and that also goes the same for switching between genres, since uh, I'm writing for fantasy and then suddenly I'm writing for contemporary, so it's also a different so writing poetry, ganyan, iba rin yung language. So, uh, you really have to, um, when you're, before you're writing, you set yourself, na yung yun mindset, this is what you're gonna write. So, uh, and another tip is get an editor. <laughs> get an editor. Uh, or, uh, kasi pati sa scientific paper, di ba, my thesis advisor naman, so, uh, they would also be able to um, help you refine the language. So, uh, they will pick out your ideas. So, you know, writing is also not um, a thing that you do in isolation. There get people to help you with your writing. It's also another thing. Okay, we have no more questions in the question and answer portion. Um, Dr. Mariano says, thank you, Celestine, for this inspiration. I know there are a lot 
who would love to write but don't know how to start a lot who have that sleeping creative writing within them that is awakened. Congratulations. Thank you, Doc. Congrats again from Anjali Dumatol. Um, I love your ghost of a feeling. Realistic and accessible, especially for the medical students, trainees, and the physicians from Dr. Moral. Joshua Garcia says, Emmanuel Joshua Garcia says, a very informative lecture. Excited to do the prompt. Thank you, Dr. Trinidad. And from Dr. Kalima, let us form the book club you envisioned before. That will be great, Dr. Actually, I, mean, I think I really think that medical students should read more outside of medicine. It helps us all become better people as well. And so thank you. Thank you, everyone. So those are the questions. And the comments. Go back right at you. Oh, there's another question. Don't creative writing can be used as well as a tool for science and health writing, especially for areas of journalism. Yes, I, I think so. Because uh, actually also here in the Philippines, uh, science writing can is very much needed, as you can see from the rampant misinformation that has been going around, especially during this pandemic. And creative writing in terms of uh, health writing and science uh, can help uh, pique the interest of readers. So um, if it's all just technical writing, sometimes it, uh, it can uh, it's hard to attract readers, but when you use creative writing for that, um, it, it helps people get a, a love reading more, so especially and love these topics more. So yeah, I really think that it can be a very good way to get people more interested. So I think we have exhausted all questions already. Marga, back to you. Okay, so just go, Leslie. Ang saya saya naman ng topic mo, and you know you you can feel that uh, a lot of people are are excited. And yun nga hindi naman kasi lahat nakakapagsulat. Pero you know when you read and ang ganda ng binabasa mo. Ah, yang saya saya talaga. Sobra, sobra. So thank you. Uh, actually, ako I. I I write, pero yung, alam mo yun, yung para lang masabing nagsusulat, it's my son who writes talaga. Yeah, one of his works also got published. Yeah. So, before we end uh, this session, let us now call um, Dr. Ivan Villaspin, another inspiration for all of us. Dr. Ivan. Thank you. I'm happy to tell you that this topic interestingly generated more questions than our medical science uh, related lectures. Uh, this means we have more compassionate doctors in attendance. Congrats, uh, Dr. Trinidad. Uh, there is this very interesting study published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine, October 2006. And I think it was already cited by Dr. Trinidad. It looked into 15 medical residents from Yale Medical Center who took part in a two and a half day writing workshop with an eminent physician author writer. He was also cited by Celestine, his name is Burgess. Findings revealed that uh, the residents who completed the creative writing workshop felt the experience helped them better appreciate their patients as unique persons and not just medical cases. Uh, clearly, this study suggests that some doctors might improve their bedside manner by honing their creative writing skills. This afternoon, we listened for one, for more than an hour, actually, to a very talented and gifted Tomasian physician writer, my decorary student, Dr. Celestine Trinidad. Your innovative and unique talk, my first time to hear such a topic, no doubt, had created a huge impact 
on our psyche as a doctor. Probably next time you should conduct a workshop on creative writing for physicians. This year, 2021 is a celebration of gratitude and joy as we distinctly commemorate USD Faculty of Medicine Surgery, uh, 150 continuous years of educating and contributing to the world, a multitude of Tomasian physicians and experts, we once again provide an innovative, highly relevant academic discourse given during this disruptive time. This could have not been made possible without the unswerving, unswerving commitment of the following to whom I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude, Dean Odette Maglina for her inspiring leadership, uh, the CME SESCI webinar project team with the indefatigable brilliant Dr. Erby writer, physician writer, Dr. Erby Kalimag at the helm, complemented by the super efficient, proactive Dr. Tina Maranyon, Drs. Marga Geliaco, Dr. Joe Mariano, digital expert, Dr. Earl Sempio, our tech support, Noel Antonio. Finally, before I close this activity, please allow me to introduce and welcome my successor, our new CME Chief Program Officer, Dr. Elaine Kunanan. So this will be my final webinar activity as we move on on August 1 with Dr. Elaine Kunanan at the helm. Onward to 150 webinars. Mabuhay kayong mga Tomasino. Mag-ingat po tayong lahat. Good evening.